Hello everybody and a big, big welcome from me and from Dimitri who fortunately is quite dozy this evening so he's not yet biting my hand, although biting my hand seems to be standard in these lessons, um, to this week's lesson on profit and loss. And if you've seen the video cover you all have seen how wealthy Dimitri has already become with his gold chain and his bright red fez um, as he studies profit and loss for 11 plus maths and applies this knowledge in his dodgy business affairs because I don't think any cat has ever yet made money in an entirely legitimate way. It's fantastic to have you all here um, and yeah a big welcome to everybody. I was especially amused looking at the comments before um, the live comments to see uh, Mehera writing um, that he or she is watching this while watching the cricket in the background. That's disgraceful behaviour but probably pretty much exactly what I would be doing in your position. I have been known to mark the object of work or record the odd video with the cricket playing silently in the background. Um, so there is a fellow spirit there. Right, anyway, what am I waffling on? Um, fantastic to have you here. The live comments today are for subscribers only. Uh, and so if you want to take part in the comments and you don't know why you can't, just click subscribe underneath the video and then you'll be able to join in. Yes, it is a sneaky way to try and encourage more people to surprise, to subscribe. I'm dastardly, aren't I? Anyway, enough waffle. Oh yeah, one more bit of waffle. Um, new release for the in the members area of the channel this week is a detailed set of videos, question by question, on um, Dame Alice Owen's school comprehension. Where I go through how I solve each of those and I explain them. And to be honest, I complain a bit about the paper because I think the sample paper that I've been working through, the one from their website, it's not a very good paper. There are a lot of problems with it. Anyway, we'll see whether you agree. So if you want to become a member and go through those videos, become a member. There's a join button right underneath the video uh, and that gives you the different membership options, blah, blah, blah. There's other stuff for members on the channel. You have Dame Alice Owen, St Paul's Girls School, uh, CEMGL Comprehension, Solihull School, uh, City of London School for Boys, King Edward School, Birmingham, Seven Oaks School, and I'm putting more and more and more stuff out every week. What preparation they should be doing in the last week before their exam? The main thing to say at this point is that everybody will have different bits of advice. But by this stage, one thing you are an I would, you are the world leading expert in, you are the world leading expert in, is how you prepare for exams and what works for you. Because nobody has studied this as much as you have. And so this is the stage to look at it calmly and say, what have I learnt about how I learn? Uh, which things work for me? How do I cover my weak topics best? How do I reinforce my strong topics best? How do I keep calm? What's the right amount of time for working and what's the right amount of time for playing? And you will know the answer to these things by now if you're one week from your exam because you've been preparing for ages and so now's the time to apply those lessons. Trust your own instincts, trust the things that you've learned and don't worry too much about what people like me say because I know less about how you prepare than you do. Um, Lots of people still really adamant that the answer is not uh, 126. Um, unfortunately, it is. Uh, a fair die has six faces marked. Nought, 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 nought. Okay, in other words, five of the faces don't earn you anything, okay? And 50p, riches. Uh, in a game at the Village Fate, players pay, players pay 10p. Cast a tongue twister. Players pay 10p, players pay 10p, players pay 10p. I, okay, it's hard. Try it. Players pay 10p to roll the die and they win the amount shown shown on the top face of the die. Okay, so you've got the die, you roll it and you either win 0p five times out of six or one time out of six you win 50p on average. Okay, during the fate the game is played 60 times. So a lot of people willing to gamble their savings away in the hope of 50p. How many times would you expect a player to win 50p? Okay, so again, I've got stuff on probability in the channel. So if you don't have any concept of this, then um, have a look at my stuff on probability and that should make it clearer. So if I roll this die six times, then, you know, you might reasonably expect that I might turn up a 50p once. Practice things don't, you know work out that way, I might not, I might do it more than once, but you'd say you know, on an average set of six rolls, 50p would turn up once. I phrase that quite carefully. Um, so if I roll it 60 times, okay, if I roll it 60 times, that's 10 times as many, I'd expect it to turn up 10 times as often. So what's 10 times once? It's 10. 
How can I write that in maths? Well, I roll it 60 times, okay? But only a sixth of those times will turn up a 50p on average. So the answer is 10, okay? So I might expect 10 times a player to win 50p. Now the wording of the question was something like this. It's a little bit awkward. How many times would you expect it? I'm going a little bit beyond this. I'm going to thinking about probability. I'm not going to get, side, get sidetracked for too long. But I would not expect it to happen 10 times. Okay? 10 times is the number of times that's suggested by the laws of probability. So if the game were played 60 times, and then I played it, let's say I played the game 60 times, 100 times, so I played it 6,000 times, I would expect that on average, for each 60 times, I would get 10 answers, okay? Now, don't worry if you don't understand that, you don't need to understand that. I would not expect it to happen 10 times in one set of 60 goes, okay? It's much more likely that it doesn't happen exactly 10 times than that it does. Don't worry, probably don't understand that. You probably haven't spent lots of time thinking about probability. Your life is probably all the richer for it. But I just should throw that in because strictly speaking, I don't like this wording. I don't think it's mathematically very precise. How much money do the players pay all together to roll the die? Okay, so the game is played 60 times and you pay 10p. This is quite a straightforward one, okay? 60 lots of 10p, so 60 times 10p. I don't think I need to do a column multiplication of this, I'm just going to times by 10, equals 600p. And 600p is six pounds. Again, I don't think I need to do a calculation for that on paper, because we know that there are 100 pence to a pound. If you don't know that, then you probably shouldn't be doing exam practice yet, you should be doing some basics. Does the game expect to make a profit or a loss, and by how much? So profit is the amount that I earn, take, in, take away the amount that I spend, basically. Okay? Um, so, I know that the I earn from running this game six pounds, okay? That's what people pay to play it. So what I earn is six pounds, so income, you don't need to write all this out, but it does make it clearer for you, I think. Income is six pounds. Expenditure, so what is the expenditure here? When does the game have to give money away? Well, that is only when they have to give prize money away to the players, okay? So when do I give prize money away? It's when someone gets 50p on the top of the die. And if I look at A, I expect that to happen 10 times when I have these 60 playings of the game. So 10 lots of 50p, expenditure 10 times 50p equals, uh, equals 500p equals five pounds. So income minus expenditure, six minus five equals one. So I make a profit because my income is bigger than my expenditure. How much I earn is greater than how much I spend. So I make a small profit of one pound. Now, was it really worth spending the day manning this game at the village fate in order to make one pound for charity? We could dispute that. But, you know, maybe this paper is so old that it was worth more money in those days. Or maybe there was a severe misjudgment made when this game was put together. Um, Murali is sorry for Bing Latier, Robert. Bing Latier, Robert. Um, I am also very sorry for Bing Latier. He did not deserve what happened to him. Um, say, ask if you have annoying siblings. Don't be rude about your siblings here. Um, honestly, honestly. Um, Marsh says to make a loss. Uh, you got it the wrong way round. Lost of one pound. No, it's a profit of one pound because the amount of money that the game makes from people paying to play is bigger than the amount that the game has to pay out to people for, for winning. Um, um, stop arguing, people. Thank you to all the people saying 
writing A, B, C if I'm the best teacher. Um, and I'm amused by the people writing CBA as a subtle form of protest against being forced to watch these lessons. Shout out for my cat, Alice. Uh, hello, Alice. And Coco, I think it's a typo for Coco. To my donkey called Donkey, a big shout out to Donkey. Hello. And the cat, Stella, who gets moon and star emojis. Uh, surely that would be Luna for the first one. That would be two cats, Luna and Stella. Anyway, um, don't argue or say rude things to each other. Someone is keeping order in the classroom. Okay, onwards. We've only got one more of these to cover. <laughs> Maybe we'll finish this lesson early and you can all get away and do the, the wild things that you have planned. Where's Dimitri got to? Where is that cat? I don't know. He's off doing something more fun than taking part in this lesson. Can you believe it? Mark has a market stall. He sells apples at 56p for each kilogram. Bianca buys four kilograms of apples. Okay, each kilogram 56p, Bianca buys four of them. So you would have got that churning in your head a little bit. She pays for her apples with a five pound note. Okay, how well organized, Hoffer. How much change should she get? I'm just gonna stop here and make a comment, which is that sometimes there are little things in a question that help you to keep things in proportion. So let's say that you worked out that Bianca paid eight pounds 24 for her apples. And then you read, she pays for her apples with a five pound note. That should be a clue to you that you made a mistake somewhere. Or if you work out that she pays 5p for the apples, but she paid with a five pound note, perfectly possible, but relatively unlikely, perhaps she'd pay with a 20p piece instead, um, for example. So then if that's what turns up, you then think, hmm, have I done this? And you check it, have I done it right? So things like she pays with a five pound note can be useful clues to test whether you're in the right kind of area with your answer. Just a little thought there. How much change should she get? Well, what does she spend? 56p for each kilogram. She buys four kilograms. OK, so let's do this. You 56 times four. So four times six is 24. Four times five is 20. But we've got the carry two here. So it's 224p. So it's two pound 24. Is that the answer? No, because we want to know how much change she should get. So be careful. Always, top exam tip, always check the question when you work something out to make sure whether or not it is actually the answer. We have found out how much she pays, not how much change she gets from a five pound note, okay? So we need to do, let's just stick to pence, 500 pence minus 224 pence. We can easily change them into pounds afterwards. Um, so. What can we do here? To be honest, this is not difficult to do mentally, but let's do it on the page here. So if we've got, well, we've got zeros here, so we have to start carrying across. So four, so that becomes 10, and then that becomes nine, and that becomes 10. 10 minus four is six, nine minus two is seven, four minus two is two. So 276 pence. So oopsie daisies, don't accidentally scroll there. Chaos, two pound 76. When you've got a line of zeros in a subtraction like this, it's often good to kind of prep it at the start, do the carrying all the way across, and then you don't get confused once you start subtracting. £2.76. Uh, I'm not going into more detail than that. I've got other videos on things like subtracting on the channel. That's the advantage of having hundreds of videos on the channel that I can always say, just go and watch those videos. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail here. Um, you can always find something on pretty much any topic by now in the Easy 11 Plus channel. Top tip, by the way, um, if you want to find a video on a topic in this channel, two things you can do. One is put Easy 11 Plus and then the topic you're searching for into the YouTube search bar. And the other thing is in the description under each video, I always link to my list of all Easy 11 Plus videos. So you can go into that list and explore it and find videos for the topics that you want. That's also a good way to find videos and topics you didn't even know you wanted to cover. And it becomes a kind of checklist for your revision. Um, Mark bought 25 melons for his stall. Okay, he paid 16 pounds for 25 melons. Work out the price Mark paid for each melon in pence. Okay. 16 pounds for 25 melons. You know how to do this. We got 16 pounds, we need to divide it into 25 bits to find out what he paid. It says in pence, so let's do our working out in pence. What's 16 pounds in pence? Well, of course, there are 100 pence in each pound, so we add two zeros on, you know that? And we're dividing by 25. I'm doing it like this because these are nice round numbers and I bet I can get a good way into this by doing some canceling, okay? 
So let's cancel. What can I divide both of these by? Well, an obvious thing is five. I really like dividing by five because it's really easy to do mentally. What, you may say, how is dividing by five easy? Because dividing by five is just dividing by 10 and doubling. 1600 divided by 10 is 160. Double it, 320. 16 times two is 32. 320 divided by, oh, I have not silenced my phone and now it's going crazy. Let's deal with that. There we are. Okay, dealt with. And 25 divided by 5 is 5. 320 divided by 5, how do we do this? Hmm, I may just have explained. Divide by 10 and double it. 32, 64. So Mark paid 64p for each melon. Work out the total amount for which Mark sold the melons. Well, five of them were bad. Oh dear, he did not select his melons very well. He sold the other 20 for 120p each, which is a spectacular markup on the 64 that he paid. Good work, Mark, good trading. So he's bought them wholesale and then he sold them on for more. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you run a shop. That's how you make money, at least running a shop. Um, you either make stuff and sell it, which is what I do, which is um, time consuming and complex, or you buy things for less money and sell it for more. I would say the latter is probably an easier way to do it when all is said and done. Um, sold the other 20 per 120p each, total amount for which he sold them, so we need to do a multiplication here. Now, I could set up a column multiplication, I do 120 times 20, I could do blah blah blah. However, timesing by 20 is so easy, let's just keep it simple. 120 times 20, well it's times 10 and double it, or double it and times 10. Double it, 240 times 10, 2400, okay? Yeah, we've doubled it, 120, 240, and then we've just added zero to times it by 10. And then because it's my handwriting, I've made those zeros really messy. Okay, so 2,400 pence, okay, because it's in pence. We need to turn it into pounds. How do we turn that into pounds? 100 pence in a pound, so we just take off the two zeros. Okay, we go from there to jump, jump. That's where the decimal point goes, 24 pounds. We don't need to write 24.00 because it's a whole number of pounds. Work out the profit Mark made in selling the melons. Giving her answer as a fraction of the cost of buying the melons. Whoa, a lot of words there. This question has two parts. And when the question has two parts, two instructions, make your life easy. Do them one at a time. Work out what profit Mark made in selling the melons. Let's do that, first of all. The profit is the money he made minus the money he spent. Okay, that should be clear to you by now. So it is 24 minus the money he spent, which was 16. So it's there in front of you if you have paid attention to the working and you know where to look. 24 minus 16 equals 8. Giving your answer as a fraction of the cost of buying the melons. Okay, that sounds so complicated, but let's just think it through steadily. It isn't that bad. As a fraction, so we got the fractions by here, we got a number on top of the fraction and a number on the bottom of the fraction. As a fraction of, as a fraction of, so we're now talking about what's on the bottom, the cost of buying the melons. What was the cost of buying the melons? It was 16 pounds, so that's gonna be what goes on the bottom. Giving your answer as a fraction of, so eight is a fraction of 16. Eight out of 16. So is my answer going to be eight sixteenths? No, it is not, okay? Because you should always simplify unless you're told not to. Simple. Eight over 16, we could go through, simple, cancel, cancel, cancel. You can see this, eight is half of 16. Of course it is, two eights make 16, it's a half. Now you may be, may be wondering whether this is half pounds. Well, let's think about that. What is half pounds? otherwise known as 50p. Did he make a 50p profit? No, he made an eight pound profit. So this is not a money answer, it isn't half pounds. He made a 50% profit, is how you'd normally express it, but they have decided that they want you to express it as a fraction. That is all, okay? Guys, stop arguing in the comments, just be nice to each other, go away. 
Um, the Atara Star is saying, ABC if you hate slow mode. Slow mode means that you have to wait 10 seconds between your comments at the moment. It's just to stop people spamming crazily. Um, and you can always tell who the people are who want to spam the comments because they complain about slow mode, um, looking at nobody in particular. Right, and there we are. That is it for the maths bit of today's lesson. If you want loads more maths that isn't on the channel, if you want question by question work throughs for past papers from popular schools, then become an Easy 11 Plus member. And as a member, you get access to loads of videos that aren't available for free on the channel. Um, yeah, getting on for hundreds, certainly well over a hundred videos, going question by question for all sorts of things. I mean, covering at the moment, I'm covering schools and covering Dame Alice Owen, St Paul's Girls, CEM and GL Grammar School exams, Solihull, City of London School for Boys, King Edward School, Birmingham, and Seven Oaks School. I've already got answers to their past papers, uh, some of them on the channel, if you become a member. So they're members only. Uh, click join underneath the video, not subscribe, that's subscribing, that's free, everyone should subscribe. If you want more stuff, if you want custom emojis, if you want to get uh, Easy 11 Plus, uh, where's the pencil case gone so I can show you, if you want to get Easy 11 Plus pencil case, Easy 11 Plus pen, all that kind of thing, uh, become a member and these are the benefits you get. By the way, click join under the video if you're watching on your desktop and you will learn how to become a member and have your life transformed with these many marvellous wonders. Anyway, um, yeah, I think it's time for today's... Lots of people are in the last few weeks before their exams now. And so I've got some... Someone's saying the lesson went so fast. The lesson is still going on. There are so many fantastic things to learn. Why would you leave now? Um, yeah, lots of people are in their last week or two before exams. And people are wondering how to use that time. Well, I spoke about that a bit earlier because someone asked and I thought, why not answer it then? Because I'm disorganized like that. Um, but one thing a lot of people wonder is how to use their time on the day. There are many things you could do on the day of the exam, but here's one thing that I think make, will make a really big difference. Have prepared a challenging maths question that you have never done before. So maybe ask a parent or a sibling or a teacher to find it for you and put it to one side. Save that, do not practice it in, in advance. Um, have prepared a few challenging verbal reasoning questions if you're tested on those, a few challenging non-verbal and spatial questions if you're tested on those, and a little bit of writing, a little bit of creative writing maybe. So in other words, have a little bit of each thing that you're going to be tested on the exam, just a tiny bit, just a two or three minute task for each kind of each part of your exam. And then on the morning of your exam, set aside 20 minutes or half an hour and do these questions as a warm up. They should be challenging things that are relevant to your exam that somebody has put aside for you that you haven't yet solved and then approach them fresh on the morning of the exam. And that means that when you go into the exam hall to actually do the real exam, you have already done some challenging new questions across your various subject areas, and your brain is already ticking. And so when you open your maths paper, and it says, now do this maths, you're not thinking, ah, oh, maths, I haven't done this since yesterday, how would I do? You're thinking, great, I've already done maths today, I'm into this. And when it says, here is a story writing question, and you think, oh crumbs, when did I last do creative writing? What does it even feel like to be creative? Well, you're not thinking that because you did at least one sentence of creative writing that morning, so you're already into it. That's the kind of thing you can do on the day that really helps you to get your mind in the right zone. Okay, um, right, that is my tip of the week. Let's get into the famous the famous your questions part of these lessons. This is going to be a short lesson. I'm not going to hang on for ages taking your questions. I'm going to be here for a few more minutes and then I'm going to say goodbye. Um, and everyone's going to be incredibly happy because you've got away, you've got off, you know, with 20, 25 minutes of free time that you didn't expect to have when you could pretend to be working and actually be, I don't know, working, of course. <laughs> what questions have I got coming in? How do you prepare for 11 plus for your exam to close? I answered that earlier. Maybe you weren't around in the lesson earlier, but later you can always rewind and listen to what I was saying. Um, it's Habib, why so short though? I'm flattered that you're finding this week's lesson too short. It's simply because the questions I prepared for the worksheet happen not to take too long to go through. That's good, enjoy it. Sometimes these lessons run on forever. Um, I love creative writing, Robert, says Ritu. 
I'm delighted. I really enjoy creative writing as well. Um, but a B, um, lots of people asking about last minute exam preparation advice. I talked about this earlier. I spoke about how you're the expert in your preparation now. So apply the stuff that you've learned over the last few months to work out what your best things are to prepare. Any advice I give is going to be less useful than the things you already know. Um, but okay, I'll drop some of the things in. Um, make a list of your weakest topics and make sure that you've gone over them so that um, they aren't complete blanks. Um, let's put it this way. You may have some topics that you're thinking, oh crumbs, I don't really know that. I'm just going to pray that it doesn't turn up in the exam. Praying that it does not turn up in the exam is not a good approach. If you've got some topics that still scare you, then you should go over them and get yourself as confident as you reasonably can be. Don't panic, but just try to get, squeeze a few more marks out of those topics. Don't just look at your weak topics. Make sure that your strong topics are still strong so that you can get marks for those comfortably in the exam. So if, if you're good at a certain thing, make sure it's still your strong point and you will bag all those marks. Make sure that the basics are in place. Make sure that your times tables are flying, that you're really good at things like converting between fractions, decimals, percentages, um, fiddly stuff like dividing fractions, that that's all fine, mixed numbers. Uh, make sure that your the spellings that you tend to get wrong, that you've revised them so you won't, that you've done practice in any grammar points that tend to be problematic. Um, cover these basics, make sure they're still fine. These might be things you haven't looked at for months. Just check them, check back over them, make sure they're okay. Um, so at this stage, you know, it's not the stage to be doing new things for revision. It's a kind of, it's a checking your weak points and making them a bit less weak, checking that your strong points are still there, making sure the basics are in place, Doing a little bit of challenging work to keep your brain ticking. That's what I spoke about earlier was potential exam day stuff, that kind of thing. These are the things you're going to be doing in the last week or two. But at the end of the day, what exactly you do and how often you do it and how you structure it, you are now the expert on that. You know your vision skills, your your you know, your what am I you know your capacities, your strengths and weaknesses as a revisor better than anybody else. So use that knowledge and don't depend on other people to tell you how to do it. Uh, what happened to Dimitri teaching? Dimitri, he, he was at the beginning of the lesson. He was teaching you how to be here for this lesson. He was around for the first few minutes and then he's, he realised that I was not paying him enough and so he ran away, um, like all the best teachers. Um, shout out to my cat that drowned. That's horrible. Um, very sadly, I don't think your cat can hear the shout out, um, but I'm very sorry to hear about that. Um... Are we going to be with random people in the place where you take the exams? No, you're you're not going to be with random people. Um, you're going to be with people who are also applying to that school, which is by definition not a random selection of people. Got to use your mathematical language accurately in a maths lesson. Um, do you have verbal reasoning videos? Of course I do. Have you looked at this channel? Uh, no, you might be new here. You might just have found this video by chance. Yes, um, there's a beautiful picture of my face with a blue background underneath this video doing something like that. Click on that, it takes you to the channel homepage, obviously after I finish this video, and you'll see all my playlists for different kinds of topics. Go to the playlist for reasoning and you'll find loads of reasoning. Um, yeah, I've done loads of stuff on verbal reasoning. Jimmy the Fish, here's a shout out for Jimmy the Fish. Um, if he's listening. Okay, okay, okay. No, I only give shout outs to pets or people who do spectacular things. People asking for shout outs for themselves. Uh, they have not understood why I'm giving shout outs to pets. Um, okay. Uh, how can I improve my nonverbal reasoning? By watching my nonverbal reasoning videos. Many of them on this channel. Uh, search Easy 11 Plus NVR in your YouTube search box and you will find loads of stuff for nonverbal reasoning. Um, anything else that's particularly pertinent? Um, what do you recommend for someone who studied for the 11 plus late? You're still in a much better position than lots of people who barely studied at all. So just do the same things. Keep calm. Keep a clear sense of what your weaknesses are and work on them and your strengths. Keep working on those and do the best that you can. That's all anybody can do anyway, however long they've studied for. Um, you may feel that you started late, but you probably started a lot earlier than plenty of other people in that exam hall because plenty of people don't really prepare at all. More full them. Uh, dumb. I'm getting confused with math rules and formulas. Have a look at my videos on algebra. Any tip for synonyms and antonyms? Have a look at my videos on verbal reasoning. Uh, you'll find many tips for these things in those places. Um,
How can I do well in algebra? Watch my videos. Now, anyone who's asking about a particular topic, you know the answer by now. It's going to be go and find my videos on that topic. Um, you don't need to ask that question. People ask about algebra, about VR, about comprehension. Uh, what are we doing next week? I haven't decided yet. Uh, I, I rarely decide before the lesson. I normally decide on sort of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday when I put the worksheet together. If you want to get the worksheet before each lesson, um, then in the description under the video, there is a link for free resources. Uh, click on that and sign up for the email that sends you the free resources. And you'll also get into my mailing list, which means that I send you each week the worksheet for the next Tuesday, for next Tuesday's lesson. So you can do it in advance. Shout out to Milky the cat um, and Fluffy the cat. Okay, uh, any tips on time management? Oh, you know what I'm going to say? I have a video on this. There's a video on timing in your 11 plus exams. Um, go and watch that. If you struggle to find that, uh, I think if you search easy 11 plus timing, you'll find it. Go to my channel homepage. And if you go to the other stuff playlist, it's in the other stuff playlist. And there are lots of versions of me in the yellow shirt running past on the cover of that video. Um, Okay, I think that will do at this point. The person who's asking, how do you improve in multiple choice comprehension? Ujwal, I know you. You've watched my videos for weeks. You know that I have lots of videos on multiple choice comprehension. Why do you not just go and watch those videos? Oh yes, I know why. Because you're winding me up by asking me a question that I've already asked you not to ask. Ingenious. You're playing me like a fool. Okay, well, if you're playing me that easily, that indicates that we've probably reached the end of the road. It's been fantastic to have you here. Come back next Tuesday at 6 p.m. for my next Easy 11 Plus Live lesson on something. Who knows what? In the meantime, in the meantime, please like and subscribe and please become a channel member because then you get all kinds of amazing benefits um, that I have already enumerated at length. So I'm not going to bore you by doing it again now. I think that's it. Dimitri isn't here to say goodbye, but if he was here, he would say goodbye, probably while biting my hand. You know how it goes. Um, he's a vicious beastie. Okay, lovely to have you here. And yeah, if you see a video in the corner of the window here, then don't think too much, just watch it. Because why would you do anything else with your evening?